This program brought to you by major broadcast partner, Charles Sturt University, a global leader in research and education for policing, law enforcement, border security, emergency management and public safety, and partner sponsor, Police Bank. Police Bank is the trusted bank of choice for police officers and their families. Police Bank has been providing a range of banking solutions for over 50 years, and all our profits go to the benefit of our members. Today, these new probationary constables take another step toward a rewarding career, serving their community in a similar way to how Police Bank has served our members through the good times and bad times. Congratulations on your graduation. Well done and welcome to the Police Bank family. About 5.20 in the morning, I'm just getting ready, putting my gear on. Got a 12 hour shift on the truck. So we'll go from here, we'll go up to the gun room, pick up our guns for the day, load them up, and then um, we'll go get our equipment. All right, ready going, go. I'm ready to go. Let's start with the day. There is no typical day as a police officer. It, every day is different. I love working out and about and we get back again tomorrow. Good morning everyone and welcome to Goulburn, New South Wales, Australia's first inland city, home of the Mawari people and of course home to the Big Merino. It is also where we find the nation's largest police academy, located here on the site of a former teachers college and turning out hundreds of police officers every year, including this class of 350. On a normal day, Goulburn has a population of around 23,000 people, so it's fair to say it has increased significantly today as proud family and friends of our police recruits to stand on this great regional centre to celebrate their graduation. But there's another reason for the extra crowd today, two in fact. Today we mark the retirements of our two most senior police officers. New South Wales Police Force Commissioner Mick Fuller and Deputy Commissioner Gary Warboys will both march off the parade ground at the conclusion of today's attestation parade, signifying the closing of two stellar careers. Joining Commissioner Fuller today for this prestigious honour will be his wife Andrea. She is in fact a self-retired police officer and proud patron of the Dog and Mounted Unit. 
We will also say goodbye today to Tracy Green, who has been the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Policing since 2015. My name is Alison Brown and I'm from the Police Media Unit and welcome again today to Goulburn for the attestation of Class 350. I'll be taking you through some of the key points of this parade, which will kick off around 9am. But before that, I'm pleased to introduce you to our commentary team for today. Joining us will be Inspector Mark Hayes from the Forensic Evidence and Technical Services Command and Inspector Greg Donaldson, a New South Wales Police Force Highway Patrol Supervisor and Protocol Officer. Also joining Mark and Greg is our special guest commentator, Carla Domatini from Charles Sturt University. Before we hear from them though, let's find out a little bit more about this Class 350 and where in New South Wales these fine new police officers will be going. Class 350 is made up of 218 new police officers, 163 men and 55 women who are attesting today from the Academy. 56 of these probationary constables will be stationed in Sydney's central metropolitan region. 45 are bound for the northwest metropolitan region. 47 have been assigned to southwest Sydney. 34 will be heading to the northern region, 18 off to southern region and another 18 off to our state's western region. It's such an exciting time for these new recruits who are ready to serve and protect the people of New South Wales. That's all for me for the moment. Back up to you guys in the commentary team. Mark, over to you. Thanks, Alison, and thank you all for joining us today for this broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Inspector Mark Hayes from the Forensic Evidence and Technical Services Command. And as Alison said, I've got beside me Inspector Greg Donaldson from the Traffic and Highway Patrol Command, and Greg is certainly an expert in all things New South Wales Police Force Protocol. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Mark. Great day to be here. Thank you. And our special guest commentator, as Alison said, Carla Tomadini from Charles Sturt University. Thanks for joining us, Carla. Thank you, Mark. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Carla brings also with her 22 years of service with the New South Wales Police Force as well. As mentioned by our on-field reporter, Alison Brown, it's a very special ceremony today. And of course, the swearing in of the 218 new recruits this morning ahead of their first day on the beat next week, where they'll launch into it. With a limited number of guests able to attend today, I'm sure we have lots of friends and families of the new recruits watching who will appreciate the sacrifices and challenges the students have faced since commencing their studies earlier this year. For those who aren't aware, Class 350 had some unique challenges this year. While they arrived on campus in Session 2 in August, you'll remember all of New South Wales was in lockdown, and so was the campus here at Goulburn. So while we're, they were able to study and do all their practicals, these students certainly weren't able to go home on the weekends until just last month. It's a big sacrifice to undertake this study in normal circumstances without being away from home during lockdown is certainly a tough one to take on. So ladies and gentlemen, I do believe we have a special treat for our viewers at home and that's a video from our Day in the Life series, which is about arriving at the Academy. Let's take a look at that video right now. This is it, this is the room. I'll be here for 16 weeks. I'm feeling pretty good. I arrived here uh, yesterday and so it just gave me a little bit of time to get my bearings. Well, driving in, it was very exciting. Um, so the sign in the helicopter that's sitting at the top was really cool. I didn't realise how big the academy was going to be. Um, last night I got here at, at night so it sort of looked big, but um, today, realising it now, it's massive. Uh, my biggest concern was becoming lost and um, not be able to um, attend lectures and you know, get in a bit of trouble, but so far it's gone well. Being a New South Wales Police Officer is one of the best occupations uh, I can think of. My role as Principal and Commander of the Academy is to ensure that the New South Wales Police Force develops through our partnership with Charles Sturt University, uh, police officers for the future. And by that I mean progressing them from students with Charles Sturt University through to on-campus studies and ultimately attested as probationary constables working in the communities of New South Wales. The key thing that anybody that starts this course wants to do is 
open that box, pull out that uniform, try it on and see how it looks. It's like Christmas. <laughs> Cargo pants. Looks like something for maybe the weapon. Yeah, there we go. So much stuff. This is only the first box. There's another box to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks good. It's going to be tough. I can see it already. Um, it's going to be interesting, but it's going to be fun. Fantastic. So today here, it's Class 350's final day here at the Academy. But let's rewind a little bit in recruitment. And I know Carla, with her involvement with Charles Sturt University, knows a little bit about that process. It's a fairly unique uh, recruitment process, the uh, education process, doesn't it, Carla? It differs to most police forces around the world, and it incorporates the tertiary studies. Yes, that's right, Mark. What happens for our students, once they've finished their training, they actually achieve the academic qualification of associate degree in policing practice. Right, we're going to cross back to... Thank you, Carla. We're going to cross back down to Alison, who's on the field. This year was the New South Wales Police Band's 125th anniversary. I believe making them Australia's longest-running concert band. I'm here with the band's vocalist, the very talented Belinda Parsons. Good morning, Belinda. Good morning, Ali. Look, our viewers would have seen the band in previous coverage, but it's the first time we've had the opportunity to actually chat. Can you explain the role of the police band within the force? Absolutely, yeah. We're a public relations unit of the band, so our role primarily is to support police events throughout the year and also help to create a strong uh, tie with the, within the community. Yeah. That's wonderful. And the Commissioner is actually marching on at the moment. And you were presented with a ceremonial bugle by him recently. Such a special occasion. What does this signify to the band? Yeah, it's a very a special occasion. Uh, the Commissioner will actually present it in front of everybody today. Um, and it does commemorate 125 years that we celebrated last year. Well, we didn't actually get to celebrate last year because of the pandemic. But um, it's an absolute honour. And it's a very special instrument, the bugle, because it um, signifies uh, uh, you know, relations within the community as well as the police force and it's used at very special occasions like Anzac Day, Remembrance Day to honour the fallen soldiers and officers that have passed. As well. You guys do such a wonderful job with those occasions and where will we be seeing you guys next? Yes, we've got lots of performances coming up because uh, everyone is craving to get out and see some uh, live music as well but we do have a very special concert coming up on the 17th of December. It's a live stream uh, so check out our Facebook page, New South Wales Police Band or the Police Force page, along with Police Legacy, because all uh, money raised on that day uh, goes to a wonderful, very worthy charity, the Police Legacy, and uh, it's uh, lots of Christmas music. I'm sure Santa will make an appearance, <laughs> and I believe that there's going to be a Donate Now button uh, during the live stream as well, so you can donate to Police Legacy, so it'll be great. It's coming out from Joan Sutherland Performing Arts Centre. So. Wonderful. We wouldn't miss the Christmas carols for sure. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Alison. I note that uh, Carla here, I understand, Charles Sturt University is farewelling Executive Dean of Policing, Tracy Green, after 23 years with the school. Yes, Tracy's worked tirelessly maintaining the partnership the university shares with the New South Wales Police Force. Tracy first joined the staff at Charles Sturt University at the New South Wales Police Academy on, in November 1997 as a lecturer in investigations. During her 23 years of employment with Charles Sturt University, Tra Tracy has worked tirelessly developing and enhancing the partnership the university shares with New South Wales Police Force. Since her appointment, she's been engaged in a range of roles, all of which have focused on policing. These include the head of policing study, head of school policing studies, and then associate dean policing. Tracy was promoted to the executive dean of the faculty in 2015, where she maintained a watching brief over policing. Thank you, thanks, Carla. That's a magnificent insight. And we thank each of them for their contributions to policing in New South Wales, and wish them all the very best in their futures. 
And uh, as we approach, I, think, I believe the students are getting ready to uh, come onto the parade ground. And that's, I'll go over to Greg because he is all things protocol and he knows this like the back of his hand. Thanks, Greg. Thanks very much, Mark. It's been a great week down here, sharing the parade ground with the students, preparing them for today. And as we can see there on the, uh, on the, on the television at the moment, the parade is being led by the uh, Mounted Police Unit. That's uh, been led by Sergeant Melinda Duncan. And our police unit is the oldest continuous Mounted Police Unit in the world. And they've served the uh, colony and then the state of New South Wales since 1825. Not only do the horses play a major role in official functions, but they also work the mean streets of New South Wales, controlling crowds at protests and big events and, and uh, doing other patrols. So a lot of the horses are ex-race horses. They've been desensitised from their previous life as a race horse and they're now able to uh, deal with noisy crowds and potential objects being thrown through the air to them. Fantastic, yeah. It's actually a fine body, isn't it? They're very, uh, very, very impressive and uh, a wonderful asset uh, in policing. Certainly they are. And uh, so many different uh, opportunities there for our young recruits. And uh, they must be feeling a magnificent feeling of jubilation today, I'm sure. It must be the end of a, a great training road and about to start next week. Yeah, they were very nervous during the week. Um, it, it all culminates in today. And our MC for the parade, uh, Senior Sergeant Meg Ryan from the Police Recruiting Unit. She's been the MC here at Goulburn for the last 10 years for every parade. So she's certainly uh, sets the tempo for the parade and coordinates everything. So we're about to step off now. We've, they've got the, um, the marching music is started. Uh, it's the, um, this is our police marching and concert band. Uh, many of those uh, musicians are uh, professional musicians and they work full time uh, with the New South Wales Police Force and then run private gigs on the weekend. In the background you can see then that uh, the students are being led. Each student is being led by, uh, uh, each unit is being led by one of the students. Um, Unit 1 is under the command of student Andrew Dargan. Unit 2 is under the command of student Taryn Godfrey. And Unit 3 is under the command of student Peter May. And unit 4 is under the command of student Joe Windiot. Very special day for the Windiot family. Uh, Joe's brother Matt is also graduating today in, in Unit 1. And uh, Joe and Matt's uh, parents met as members of the 1976 Olympic swimming team. And they've certainly raised two fine kids and they'll be both being police officers starting next Monday on the streets of New South Wales. Fantastic. We have a lot of uh, police family as well, don't we? We have uh, a few of the students out there. Yeah, look, I've met this week walking around the parade ground at least seven uh, sons or daughters from serving police officers that I know. So it's, um, it certainly runs in the family. There's also 15 ex-military out there and they bring certain skills to the New South Wales Police Force. Yeah. The, the band there has been led by drum major Jack Lung under the baton and the director of music, uh, John Saunders. Yeah, you tick two of those boxes for me, Greg. I had a daughter that joined last year who's been in just over a year now and a son that's just uh, finished in the military and he's about to put his application in as well. So. Yeah, my son graduated six weeks ago, so he's at Mount Druitt wow. now. And Great feeling, isn't it? It's yeah. uh, tremendous pride and it brings me back to the days when we graduated. I think, uh, Carla, you are in 85? Yes, I was in 85. Unfortunately, I wasn't on this beautiful parade ground they have today. I was on an oval that was grass, but uh, yep. nonetheless, we enjoyed it. We did, and I was there in 87 on the grass as well. <laughs> well, I feel like a youngster amongst uh, this crowd. I was 89. <laughs> uh, seems like only yesterday, but really it was a long time ago. It was, but it's been a magnificent career, and I wouldn't turn back the clock for anything. No. I've loved every minute of it, yeah. and I still enjoy it today. So we can see now the support units have entered the parade ground, the horses and the band. And the parade now is being led by Sergeant Tony Wade. He's uh, the parade sergeant and he's also the senior protocol and drill instructor here at the academy. And he's been teaching these, uh, the course for the last four months in the individual drill movements. And this last week is all about putting those movements together uh, so that the show that we put on today uh, is, a, is a good one. So most of the movements that you see on the parade ground hark back to the days of uh, knights and muskets and where um, army generals would use the parade ground to practice moving their troops around the battlefield. So most of the movements that we will see today uh, are remnants of that and it certainly harks back to the traditions uh, from hundreds of years ago. And it's a really important part of instilling discipline into the students. If we as um, operational commanders on the road direct an officer to do a certain thing, 
um, go to the back of the house, watch that window and let me know if you see somebody inside, then we know that they're going to do it. So if we get them to stand still for the next hour, uh, then we know they're going to watch that window for us. Absolutely, yeah. And it's like any police operation. I know both of you have got a lot of experience in plain clothes investigations and, and really all police operations are a group of people working together to achieve a result at the end. And that's exactly what uh, drill is. Yeah, it is, and I say that many times to our people. You know, they say, well, you do this bit, you do that bit. But it's a team. It's a team effort, and uh, it's a culmination of that in doing what we do to keep the community of New South Wales safe and uh, to prosecute those who are doing the wrongdoings. And uh, that's our aim and from, the, from the ground up from these police who are going to walk out on the beat next week on Monday, perhaps if they're rostered on on Monday or that, one of those days of the week. But they're going to start in general duties. And that is the backbone of our policing. It's what the, uh, the public see. And they're the first responders to nearly every event that occurs. And then we can back it up with our specialist uh, groups and our specialist commands to uh, take it to the next level. But all, so, all achieving that uh, uh, end result. So the students have been marched onto the program now. And now you'll see that uh, Sergeant Tony Way, the parade sergeant, will hand over the parade to the parade commander, who is Superintendent Mark Wall from Youth Command very special day for Mark. Uh, his son Jonah is graduating today and it's certainly a privilege to be and an honour to be out in the same parade ground as his son graduating. The parade sergeant will now hand over the parade to the parade commander. Magnificent opportunity for anyone at home that may be thinking about joining the New South Wales Police Force. And there's certainly on the New South Wales Police Force webpage, there's all the information about recruiting there. So uh, if anyone's thinking about a career in policing, it's a, I can back it. And I'm sure my panel here, uh, Carla and Greg, would say the same thing. It's a magnificent career and uh, so many opportunities there. It's a lot of fun, Mark. The Absolutely. parade commander will now order the banner ensign to march on the New South Wales Police Force banner. There is no requirement for uniformed personnel to salute during the march on. Once the banner has halted in position, the band will play a musical salute. Upon the order to the banner escorts to present arms, all uniformed personnel are to salute at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. So the banner is going to be escorted on by our um, Scottish band, our pipes and drums. And our banner holds a... Um, a great honour to the New South Wales Police Force. It's uh, afforded the same rank and respect as the Police Commissioner in ceremonies such as these. And it harps back to British military traditions where the banner uh, was a rallying point in battle for the troops. It must not fall into enemy hands. And therefore it's escorted by an armed escort uh, with rifles and swords. The New South Wales Police Force banner is carried by Inspector Cheryl Day, Lake Macquarie Police District. The escorts to the banner are Senior Constable Rob Hyde, Protocol and Awards Unit, and Senior Constable Scott Whale, Central North Police District. The New South Wales Police Force banner is held in great esteem as it represents the proud history and traditions of a force which has served the Crown, Government and people of New South Wales since 1862. The New South Wales Police Pipe Band is also under the command of Drum Major Nick Tragutis and the Pipe Major is John Iverson. It's a magnificent item, the police banner. It's uh, uh, 40,000 uh, threads are in there. Uh, yeah. It took uh, 20,000 man hours to make, uh, hand stitched. Um, the, the, uh, it's made out of uh, real gold and real silver stitching. Um, it's a fantastic item and it's certainly worthy of the respect that we give it. Yeah, very impressive. The police band are a good complement to that banner, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Well, this is the, the Highland Band, so they're not full time uh, musicians, they hold down uh, regular jobs in the community. And they're volunteers, whereas our concert band, our marching band, they're all full-time with the New South Wales Police Force. Our 
And that's in the field of battle. Uh, the, the banner will be marched around and will take up a position in the middle of the parade ground between units one and two. And then there'll be a musical salute to the banner. I do believe there's a couple of retired gentlemen out there in our pipe band as well. I we'll see one going past there. Yeah, you'll recognise a few faces in there. Yes. yes. with a great day at the stage. It's been Melbourne. hot all week. Yeah, it's been yeah. hot and steamy all week. Um, we were a bit worried uh, last week. It was uh, a, four, uh, a forecast of rain all week, and today was supposed to be 100 mil, uh, 10 mils of rain, so it's, uh, it's, it's good. Although so it's sure. going to be hot and demanding for the students to be standing out there it will for be. the next hour. And no doubt you, uh, you update them, I'm sure, in the hydration processes to make sure they are hydrated. They've got to drink. They've got to uh, keep their minds active while they're standing still. the arrival of the Honourable Dominic Perrottet MP, Premier of New South Wales. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing. And the Premier has been escorted by the VIP motorcycle team from the Traffic and Highway Patrol Command and they're being led today by Sergeant Mick Walsh. Very exper experienced in uh, escorting VIPs around the state. Uh, once again, as, as the same as the horses, as a support unit, they also uh, perform a, a great role on our roads, uh, doing road policing and, and arresting bad guys. And um, they, they had their own um, television show not long ago. The Motorcycle Cops. Yeah, yeah. Motorcycle Cops. So uh, some quite of these people riding up there today are the same people that were on that show. And they're quite witty. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> they're good. Yeah, they've got a sense of humour, as they you have, have to do to, to succeed in this job. You need to be an all-rounder, don't you? You do. But, uh, you, you face so many different challenges, and you don't know what you're walking out there to each day on the, on the beat. So the first draw we'll arrive today is uh, the Honourable Dominic Perrottet. I believe this is his first attestation as the New South Wales Premier. Mr. Perrottet will be greeted with a uh, general police salute. The parade will now officially welcome the Premier with a general salute. All uniformed personnel are to salute on the command, present arms. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Each of the unit commanders take the salute for their group, obviously. Yeah, that's right. They're We're in the commander of their the unit, so they the take it all on behalf of uh, all Excellency, of their uh, The unit. Honourable Margaret Beasley, AC, QC, Governor of New South Wales. The reviewing officer is being escorted by VIP cyclists under the command of Sergeant Mick Walsh. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. So our governor will also be our reviewing officer, which means that she'll inspect the students on the parade ground, maybe have a quiet chat to some of them, and she might ask why they joined or what their future career goals are, or simply something like, uh, where are you going to, where are you being stationed? She's a lovely lady, and it's the 39th governor, governor of New South Wales, and she's about two and a half years into her five-year tenure. You will notice that when she arrives, she'll be greeted with a royal salute, uh, which is a, a little bit different. You'll see the banner ensign will lower the flag. Um, our badges actually carry a, a great sign of respect to the governor. 
the, the line in the middle of our crest uh, is, represents the Governor of New South Wales. And she's wearing the, New South, the uniform of the New South Wales Police Force. Um, as, our, um, as our big boss, I suppose. Yes. He has committed some years back where the uh, government commits to wear the uniform. Was yeah. So she was appointed Queen's Council in 1989. In 1993, she was made the judge of the Federal Court of Australia, the first woman to sit exclusively in that court. In 1996, she achieved the distinction of being the first woman appointed to the New South Wales Court of Appeal and subsequently the first woman to be appointed as its president. She served on a number of occasions as administrator the of the government of the New South the State of New South Wales. With a royal salute. All uniformed personnel are to salute on the command, present arms. Thank you. Please be seated. The parade commander will now invite the reviewing officer to inspect the parade. But I remember when the reviewing officer walked around 34 years ago, you were wondering, was she, he or she going to stop in front of you? You were scared for them to stop, weren't you? You were, because you were thinking, what am I going to say? Have I got it already? In case they may stop in front of me. And while the inspection takes place, ladies and gentlemen, and for our viewers at home, uh, we have a special video presentation for the viewers at home. And we have a tribute to our soon-to-retire officers, Commissioner Mick Fuller and Deputy Commissioner Gary Warboys, which we'll show you while the uh, inspection takes place. I was never a great scholar and I was always looking out the window about well, what there must be something out there more exciting than this and I really naturally felt that the police would, would provide that and I like the idea of service, I like the idea of this notion of, of, of not essentially giving back but, but being able to, to have a job that looks like it would be a lot of fun and you're actually helping people at the same time as well. There's no other job that allows you to to do what policing does, it allows you to take the freedom away from people who deserve that, it allows you to um, uh, to hop in a car and turn on the lights and sirens and 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 do those exciting things to, to be involved in um, the search for people in major crime, to put some sort of um, sense around a tragedy uh, for them, um, to give them some sort of um, respite uh, when they think that everything um, has, has washed away from them. Young police officers need to understand that when they talk and speak to someone, uh, particularly in their time of need, that those people will remember that conversation for the rest of their lives. You know, when I joined, it was a mix of people out of university and a mix of trades, tradies, and, and, and that was a really good mix. But progressively, we've moved to more towards university-based applicants and you know we've got people that used to be chemists and a whole range of different professions now joining the organisation and I think that professionalism ha has allowed us certainly to embrace technology much quicker and, and evolve like you know you've seen through COVID. You have to be flexible, you have to be open to new ideas. We owe the community, we've made that choice uh, and we need to step up um, at every opportunity. Of course there's going to be times when um, some of the things that we deal with are the most dreadful things and people in society and, and again, you know, like I never, I never walked into policing and thought that I would never see horrible things or deal with bad people or have bad days. I always knew that that was a part of it. Um, but by God, the good times far, far outweigh those dreadful times. And if I could make people feel safe, then... then you know, that is the ultimate test as a police commissioner. Yes, you can make people safe from a, from a statistics perspective, but if I make you feel safe, if you go to bed feeling safe and you sleep well and your family sleeps well, that's job done. Sometimes you cannot measure the impact you have on people's lives.
Yeah, great insight there by the, uh, the Commissioner and the Deputy into their policing careers. Wonderful. And they've had certainly seen some experiences in their time, I'm sure, and uh, as we all have. So the review continues out on the parade ground. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, there's a number of officers, uh, as Greg mentioned, that have come from the military and uh, our viewers may see they're displaying their medals that they received in the military. So we see some of the uh, young police out there attesting today who are probably already decorated with a number of medals on their chest. Yeah, that certainly brings a lot of skill. So, so what happens, what does happen to these recruits after today, Carla? Are they fully fledged police officers after today? Um, yes, when you take the oath of office, that entitles you to all the powers of a fully fledged police officer. However, they've still got another 12 months of uh, study ahead of them, which will then enable them to receive the associate degree in police in practice and to become a constable of police. At the moment, today, after today, they'll be probationary constables and after that 12 months, they'll be constables of police. So that study is continuous, they uh, walk the beat and it's all practical based from here on? It's not just practical based, they, they still do um, academic study, so it's a combination of, of both. They have an operational portfolio that they need to complete um, whilst they're at the station and that's their field training officer, we'll review their work, we'll uh, mark them competent and then they'll, they'll achieve the practical application but they've also required to still complete some written assessments and some tests. And I know that we're looking for more recruits uh, at the moment and what's the best way for uh, people out there to start that process? The best way I would say was to go onto the New South Wales Police Recruitment website um, I think it's an easy search to find and all the details of the requirements are there and people can read up. But I definitely recommend, if you're even thinking about it, to go onto that website and have a little read. Look, it's certainly a, um, it's not within the reach of most people. And even if you're a mature age person, uh, one of the students in my class, uh, Carolyn Groves, Groves um, she was also known as mum to the, to the uh, other students. She's a mature age lady with four children, uh, Joshua, Jack, Henry and Max. Hello to all of you out there. In her life before policing, she was a personal trainer and uh, she's uh, joined the police force, moving her family from Ballina to Grafton over this weekend. And is there additional support for people who are uh, returning to studies uh, after a long time away from them? Yeah, there certainly is. We run um, regular student consultation events where the teachers will go through any work they require. Students also develop their own study groups to assist each other. What we found or the research says that students actually learn the best from each other. They do and I'm sure they learn plenty on the road. So you've uh, instilled them with plenty of academic knowledge. And just in a really quick snapshot, it's uh, eight weeks online first is the prerequisite course, correct, Carla? That's right. That's the University Certificate of uh, Workforce Essentials. So that's eight weeks full-time. Yes. Or you can do an accelerated program of four weeks. Right. And then they take on, and at present, we're in the stage of uh, from the time they're recruited, they're online for four months, and then they attend the academy for four months. That's correct. So That's... we have session one is 16 weeks online, or you, there is an option to do it 32 weeks part-time online. Right. And, and then, then all our recruits come here for 16 well, weeks. 16 weeks. So four months down here, and uh, then you're uh, attesting just like today's students. So uh, magnificent opportunity. Program. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand as senior police chaplain... The Reverend Murray will know, blesses the parade. As Class 350 prepare to make their attestation and begin their service in the New South Wales Police Force, we ask a blessing on all of them. Let us pray. God, our Creator, as we look at these proud, strong students gathered together on this parade ground, we thank you for each one of them and we ask you to watch over them, guide them and carry them forward. May your strength be with those who love them, their friends and families who have supported them through their studies. Ease their transition back into their home lives as they begin their roles in a new policing family. Bless those who have worked to train them, the principal and staff of this academy and members of Charles Sturt University. Be we with Mr Fuller and his family in the years to come. May your grace be always with them. Bless Ma'am Webb as she prepares to become our commissioner. Guide and strengthen her as she takes leadership of our police force. 
defend the state of New South Wales and all who lead and serve it, the Minister for Police, our Premier, our Governor and all who serve in public life. Gracious Creator of us all, Almighty God and Prince of Peace, may your spirit of peace rest upon us all now and evermore. Amen. Thank you, Padre. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <clears throat> As the New South Wales Police Force recruits its members from a range of cultural groups, the Police Act provides for persons to attest by either swearing an oath of office or making an affirmation. The Parade Commander will now prepare the students for their attestation. And this is the important part of the parade. They'll all be police officers in a few minutes. They will be, yes, correct. And uh, they get to remove that uh, light blue banner. Yeah, the, the light there. blue, um, it uh, hides the checker band of the New South Wales Police Force. At first we're going to see them take their oath of office and or affirmation, where they'll swear allegiance to the, uh, to the Commissioner and to the Queen. Yeah, the sovereign. Of course that honour is bestowed upon Commissioner Michael Fuller for the very last time. I now invite Commissioner Michael Fuller, APM, to attest the members of Class 350. Thank you, Sergeant. Good morning, Class 350. Substituting your own name for mine, repeat after me. I, Michael John Fuller, I, Jackson, do, swear, do swear, do solemnly, sincerely, do solemnly sincerely, and truly declare and affirm, and truly declare and affirm that I will well and truly serve, well and truly serve our, sovereign lady, the Queen. our Sovereign Lady, the Queen, as a police officer, as a police officer without favour or affection. Malice or, Malice or ill will, until I am legally discharged, until I am legally discharged. That, I cause, that I will cause Her Majesty's peace, Her Majesty's peace. To, be kept to be kept and preserved, and that I will prevent, I will prevent. To, the power, to the best of my power, all offences against, against that peace, and that while I continue, while I continue to, be officer, to be a police officer, I will to the best, I will to the best of my skill and knowledge. Discharge all, my duties, Discharge all my duties, faithfully according to law. According to law. So, help me God. so help me God. Well done. So the last part of this process is you'll see the students remove the light blue headband to Thank expose you, the checker band. The checker band is actually called the Silito Tartan and it was introduced by Sir Percy Silito who in 1932 was the Chief what? Constable of Glasgow Police what? Force and it was adopted to increase the visibility of police at night because their uniform was all black, their hat was all black. So this is a very moving part of the parade and when they come back to attention at the end, it's probably number two in my highlight. The parade, the parade commander parade. will now direct the newly attested probationary constables to remove their student cap bands. This will reveal their badge of office and the chequered cap band. Please withhold your applause until the probationary constables have returned to the attention position. They'd all be very, feeling very happy with themselves right now, I'm sure. Yeah, I bet they wish they very could proud. have a mirror. <laughs> yes, very proud out there. And there we have it, 218 new police yes, officers in the New do. South Wales Police Force. It's a great achievement, and I, and I take back to student Carolyn Groves, uh, Carla, who uh, left her family, her four little boys, for four months to come down here in the middle of COVID, so she couldn't go home to visit them on weekends. What a great sacrifice, and she's achieved her lifelong dream now of becoming a police officer. Yeah, and I'd, I'd recommend that any person who think they officer, might be too old Chief or too mature Toby to do Lindsay it, to to still give brain. it a go. What we find is with our older students, they've got great communication and people skills. Right. Thank you, Senior Sergeant so they really Burke. do well. I acknowledge and welcome our special guests for today's parade, Her Excellency the Honourable Margaret Beasley, AC, QC, Governor of New South Wales, and Mr Dennis Wilson, the Honourable Dominic Perrottet, MP, Premier of New South Wales, the Honourable David Elliott, MP, Minister for Police and Emergency Services, and Mrs Nicole Elliott, the Honourable Brad Hazard, MP, Minister for Health and Medical Research, 
The Honourable Stuart Ayres, MP, Minister for Jobs, Investment, Tourism and Western Sydney. The Honourable Mark Taylor, MP, Parliamentary Secretary for Police and Justice. Commissioner Michael Fuller, APM, and Mrs Andrea Fuller. Commissioner Designate, Deputy Commissioner Karen Webb, APM, and Mr Mark Webb. Deputy Commissioner Gary Warboys, APM, and Mrs Warboys. Deputy Commissioner Mal Lanyon, APM. Deputy Commissioner Michael Willing, APM. Deputy Commissioner Dave Hudson, APM. Former and current Commissioners of Police and Emergency Services. Mrs Wendy Tuckerman, MP, Member for Goulburn. Professor Tracy Green, Executive Dean, Charles Sturt University. And to all our distinguished guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the attestation of Class 350. As the Commander and Principal of the New South Wales Police Academy, it is my privilege to congratulate the attesting class and acknowledge their extraordinary efforts. I also recognise and thank our dedicated New South Wales Police Academy, OSSC and Charles Sturt University teaching and support teams who helped these men and women become our newest police officers. Today marks a special day for the 218 men and women of this class who commenced their training in the midst of a global pandemic. This provided their first significant challenge, one of many challenges they will face during their policing careers. Men and women of Class 350, I thank you for your sacrifices, individual commitment and teamwork through this unique time. Your resolve was tested. However, through your commitment to study and with the support of the Police Academy and Charles Sturt University teams, you have risen to that challenge. You have displayed strength of character, self-discipline, good humour and dedication on your journey to become police officers. You are testing today as highly trained, capable and well-equipped police officers ready to confront the real world challenges and serve our communities. As you progress through your policing career, never lose sight of either who you serve or why you are serving. You serve the people of New South Wales. You serve not for yourself, but for others and our communities. We acknowledge your loved ones here today and we are very glad that they can share this achievement and milestone with you. I am sure you are grateful for their support and encouragement today. The Police Academy is also gratefully acknowledging the long-standing support of Commissioner Fuller and Mrs Fuller and Deputy Commissioner Warboys and Professor Tracy Green. Our team wishes you all all the best. Finally, Class 350, maintain your study and commitment over the next 12 months and throughout your career. You have earned your place on this parade ground today and as members of the New South Wales Police Force family. On behalf of all of us at the Police Academy, we wish you every success in your policing career. It is now my privilege to invite Her Excellency, the Honourable Margaret Beasley, ACQC Governor of New South Wales, to address the parade. Thank you, Ma'am. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and I pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. And I extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. Premier, Minister Elliott, Mr Mark Taylor, Mrs Wendy Tuckerman, Commissioners and Deputy Commissioners, Mayor, Officers, Family, Friends and, leaving the most important to last, Class 350. Can I say you look superb. And can I say, I know you are going to be superb police officers of the New South Wales Police Force. Policing is about many things. You take your part in the administration of justice. Policing is about ethos and tradition. Those traditions include family traditions of daughters, of sons, following fathers and mothers into the force, of siblings becoming colleagues, 
and where the force is a place and there will be times when you will need and you will find your rock. A rock in your family, in your friends and in what is now your new family, the New South Wales Police Force. As you've learned during the course of your study, which has led you on to the parade ground this morning, policing is sophisticated, multidisciplinary, highly professional and highly demanding. Given that by next week you will be in your posts all over the state, facing the challenges that policing brings, and doing so, I suspect, with a mixture of excitement and apprehension, I'm going to suggest that amongst the many skills you need, the following skills, and indeed one might call them the qualities of a very good police officer, will help you not only in your first year, but throughout your policing career. You need to be a good communicator. The skill of a communicator is not only to deliver a message. It requires much more. It requires you to listen, to analyse, to question and to think. And most of that has to be done almost simultaneously, so it's not an easy task. And perhaps it could be summed up with that very simple and old-fashioned saying, think before you act. Compassion and empathy should be intrinsic to you as a police officer. However, as one police, officer, one police educator has explained, in the situations where compassion is most needed, you must still remain professional. Next, and so obviously, comes integrity. Integrity in the little things and integrity in the big things. There is only one measure of integrity. And along with the strategic and analytical skills in which you have been trained and which you will continue to acquire, never forget that a bucket load of common sense comes in very handy in every policing activity that you undertake. Your training officers have already seen these qualities in you. You would not be on the parade ground were it otherwise. They would also have observed you as you have demonstrated your adaptability as, along with school and tertiary students across the state, you've studied online and in lockdown. Thank you for your perseverance and, as I have said, your adaptability, qualities which will also keep you in good stead over the years. As you now move into the police force, as you now are police officers, with responsibility for the safety of the community, I thank you for deciding to join the New South Wales Police Force. Today is your day of celebration and of family pride. Savour this moment. It is and will remain one of the most precious moments in your lives. Before concluding, I would like to congratulate the New South Wales Police Band, which is marking its 125th anniversary. This parade is also the last attestation parade of your and our Commissioner, Mick Fuller. Commissioner, in announcing your retirement, you observed that it's a job that requires enormous energy. You have needed every ounce of your energy in leading the force over the last five years. It has been, without doubt, a Herculean effort by you and your officers during the natural disasters and the health crises of the last two and a half years, whilst also maintaining the efficiency and the expertise of the force in crime prevention and crime detection. You have helped, had to deal during the whole of that time with organised criminal activities as well as the sometimes sadder but often more merely opportunistic offending which occurs on a daily basis in our community. You kept it all together and you kept it going. Thank you Mick. Thank you family. You've performed your duties to the highest level and we would have expected nothing less. We will also miss the similarly calm leadership of Deputy, Deputy Commissioner Warboys as he moves into his well-earned retirement and former Detective Senior Constable Andrea Rodriguez. Congratulations to each of you as we honour the successful completion of your distinguished careers in the New South Wales Police Force. Commissioner-designate Karen Webb, Congratulations. You have a fine force to lead, including the graduate, graduates before us today, class 350. 
To Class 350, we are here to honour you. You've taken an oath to well and truly serve. We, as a community, now place our trust in you. Congratulations, Class 350. May you go well as you rise to this challenge. Thank you, you Mayor. I now invite the Honourable Dominic Perrottet, MP, Premier of New South Wales, to address the parade. Can I uh, begin uh, by saying what an honour and privilege it is to be here today uh, with the Police Minister, uh, my other ministerial colleagues and members of Parliament, uh, alongside uh, the Commissioner, uh, to congratulate each of you, uh, not just uh, on your graduation uh, today, but also to congratulate you and thank you uh, for the service that you will undertake uh, in protecting the people of New South Wales. Today you are joining a force of the highest calibre, known for its integrity and professionalism. Being a police officer means facing some of life's most daunting challenges head on. It requires a sharp intellect, fearlessness, discipline and compassion. And by being here today, you have proven that you have all of these. The New South Wales Police Force sets the highest standards of courage, commitment and professionalism. Standards that each of you have sworn today to uphold. Over the last couple of years, our community has relied on these qualities more than ever. Police have been uh, the unsung heroes uh, of the COVID pandemic. Uh, they have been integral to our frontline defence against COVID-19. They've stood up our hotel quarantine system, put life-saving public health orders into effect, helped enforce border restrictions when things were at their worst, and helped support individuals and communities that were doing it tough and, importantly, maintaining social cohesion across our state. Every single member of the New South Wales Police Force across our state have performed their duties, balancing compliance with compassion. They've maintained that social cohesion and avoided the challenges our state faces. Each of you, like other members of the New South Wales Police Force, will put your life on the line every single day in the protection of communities right across our state. We thank you for that very much. Uh, and importantly, I can say on behalf of the New South Wales Government, on behalf of all my colleagues uh, who, who are here today, that we will stand by you every single step of the way. I want to wish you every single success as you embark uh, on your police careers. You should be incredibly proud of being here today, as should every one of your families and loved ones who are here to support you as well. The job that you have chosen to do and to pursue a career in is a vocational one, and it is one of the most important careers in our community. Can I thank you uh, for choosing to join the New South Wales Police Force? Uh, thank you for the service that you will show uh, for the people of New South Wales, for protecting every single one of the eight million people across our great state. In conclusion, I want to thank outgoing Commissioner Mick Fuller. Uh, Mick uh, has been an incredible uh, force here in New South Wales. His leadership um, of the New South Wales Police Force has been second to none. His leadership and as someone who's worked incredibly closely with him, my former role as Treasurer and now as Premier of this state uh, during uh, the COVID and the challenges that our state uh, has incurred over uh, the last five years um, has been absolutely outstanding and superb. Uh, to Mick and to Andrea, thank you very much for your service uh, to the Police Force, but more importantly, uh, to every single person across our state. And I want to say on behalf of every single member, every single citizen, the eight million across New South Wales, New South Wales is better off as a result of the leadership that you've given our great state. So thank you very much. And finally, uh, to welcome uh, Commissioner-elect Karen Webb, who I know will serve just as well as you have for the people of New South Wales. Thanks very much. Thank you, sir. 
I now invite Commissioner Michael Fuller, APM, to address the parade. Well, good morning, ladies and gents, and I won't possibly try and run through all the special guests that are here today, but certainly warmly welcome the Governor back to, to what is, you know, back to normal parade. It's great to see you here with Mr Wilson. Premier, I know it's your first parade as Premier and you're welcome back here any time and it's great that you've all get to see what is just not just an amazing group of, of young police that are about to hit the streets, but just the support that is around for, for police officers and having you here, your colleagues, uh, means a lot. You have commissioners here from around Australia to see you, to support you. We've got commissioners here from the emergency services. You have the deputy commissioners that have served me loyal over the last five years. And, and to think that we all stood where you stood, we sat in the classrooms that we stood in, I think it's inspirational in terms of where you may be in 34 years' time. To my family and friends that are here today, thank you for being here. Uh, and a big thank you to Deputy Commissioner Gary Warboys, who's marching off with me today, and Detective Senior Constable Rodriguez, which is actually my wife, marching off as well, just in case you were wondering how that was going to work. Um, <laughs> Class 350, um, we had a great chat yesterday, and, and it was just a delight to talk to you. You were such an upbeat class. You've been through a lot, 16 weeks, and I think you only had two weeks at home with your families and your loved ones, and that's just a great testament to the strength that you will have when you're fully deployed. But there's a couple of things that I just want to reiterate with your family and friends and loved ones. And we talked about commitment to the community, and I said to you that if you remember nothing else, is that we exist to protect the community. And if you protect the community, you make them number one, and that commitment is unwavering. They're not just mine, but all the police that are here today, our commitment to you will be unwavering. If you remember no other message that we exist to protect the community, you will have a long and happy career. Secondly, and unfortunately, we can't protect you from the dark side of what you will see. And unfortunately, you'll see some of the worst human behaviour. What I can do is tell your family, friends and loved ones that you are the best trained police in Australia, potentially the world, you have the best resources, you will have the best support, but the reality is that there will be times where you'll need to put your hand up for help, and help is what you'll get. But it is a contract, not just with you, but with your families and loved ones, and I'd ask that we all stay connected in terms of looking after not just your physical, but also your psychological strength as well. So don't underestimate the pressures that you will face, but I would also don't underestimate the support that will be there for you. Class 350, 218 highly trained staff about to go into the community as you know, I move into the retirement phase. And Andrew and I were talking about this this morning and, and just that feeling of safety that I get knowing that you will be out there protecting my family. I thank you for that. Can I say that my journey has been an extraordinary one and, and I'm in debt to the people of New South Wales. I, I loved every day. It was like being paid to be on the greatest adventure. And I challenge you to go on your own adventure. And whether you stay in general duties or you become a detective or you end up in the air wing, or the, there, there are so many different roles that you can take on that will have an impact on public safety. And so my challenge to you is, as you join the police family, is just really embrace how amazing this job is and look around at the support that's here for you today. And, and we all look forward to seeing you out on the street protecting the community. Class 350, we're immensely proud of you. And can I say farewell, but welcome to the police family. Well done. Some very wise words there from a very experienced and accomplished police officer who's been a fantastic leader. And uh, I wish him all the best in Thank retirement, you, but also I welcome Commissioner the parade commander Karen Webb will now prepare to the, the parade role. for the yes, march past. I'm sure she'll take it on uh, and, uh, and do a good job as well. And uh, like they said, it's, uh, she'll undertake her five-year term and we'll see uh, if she continues or we'll see how it goes there. Yes, so, but uh, yeah, Commissioner Fuller's certainly been a, a great uh, a commissioner in his uh, five-year term. And I think, as he mentioned, that the training, the uh, we are at world's best standard with our training, the equipment, the services that are provided to each and every officer is incredible. 
So now the parade commander is preparing the course for the newly attested probationary constables of police for the uh, march past. Uh, so they'll all start marching and they'll pass uh, the commissioner, they'll look him in the eye. And this harps back to another age-old tradition in medieval times where kings and the royal court would review the troops as they departed the castle to head off to war. They'd look each other, each officer in the eye and that would be a sign that I'll be prepared to go to war for you. And uh, as they pass the commissioner, they'll be given the command of eyes right by their unit commander and they'll maintain that eye contact. Once the banner has passed you, please So it's just a nod to their loyal service and sacrifice. And um, in today's world, they're not fighting an enemy state, but they're combating crime and the fear of crime in our society. As they march past Carla, um, one of my students from the class that I was, from my unit that I was teaching there in Unit 1, he came out from Sierra Leone and, and as a 12-year-old boy, not speaking any English at all. Um, and now as a young 22-year-old, he's graduating and he'll be uh, going to Campbelltown for his general duty uh, appointment on Monday morning. Is there any additional assistance that uh, CSU and the Academy offer people whose language at home may not be first, first language may not be English? Uh, we certainly have, Greg. Um, CSU provides a academic skills advisor, and that's currently Jessica Rigby, and she's installed some programs, workshops, uh, extra resources to help with those, and particularly those students. And um, just looking at the cross-section of students um, we've got in the class today, we've got just not only Sierra Leone, but uh, Vietnam, Spain, uh, Chinese, uh, Croatian, Turkish, Thai, Korean. So we have a real broad section of the community, which is a great thing. Yeah, and as the community is multicultural, our, our police force needs to be multicultural so that we can... Uh, service the needs of our community and makes us a better police force, I would imagine. Absolutely. Yeah, it certainly does because uh, obviously there's language barriers out there in the community and these officers having that ability to speak those uh, other languages is uh, a, a great asset to our policing force. And, and certain cultural traditions as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yes. And Mark, you're saying uh, it's, a, it's, it's very operationally focused. Uh, we were only talking yesterday that quite often you hear on the police radio um, if there's a police officer that can speak a certain language, can they contact a number? And, and obviously that means that somebody needs a hand. They do, that's right, yes. It, it, there's not many days go by where I don't see something come out uh, looking for a particular uh, strain of, uh, of language. And uh, these police officers, with that diversity, will certainly uh, bolster those, uh, that, that great skill level that we have to do with our diverse community. So you'll see that uh, they've marched past now and the four units are now forming up at the rear of the parade ground uh, and they're going to perform a, a drill movement called the advance in review order. Um, remember I said earlier that most of the drill movements hark from uh, kings and generals and commanders uh, practicing moving their troops around a, a battlefield. So this particular movement, the advance in review order, the advance was given when you were winning the battle and today it signifies that these students now, probationary constable police have won the battle that they've been through to get here today. Um, a battle that's been well supported by serving police officers here at the academy, their instructors, and by CSU and the academic staff. I think it's very impressive too, so for our viewers, uh, to watch this part of the manoeuvre. When they do advance in review order, I think it's a, it's a great spectacle too. Well, remember I said to you that removing the, the cat bands was my second favourite yes. part? Guess what my first is? This is number one. Number one. Uh, so it's uh, very impressive when done correctly and hopefully the dedication and training that we've put the kids through in the last four months and we've honed in the last week down here will pay off today. Yeah, and also uh, I know we've spoken to Carla a lot about the academic uh, qualifications that we provide all these police with, which is certainly impressive. Uh, there's also a physical component, which is um, for anybody that's thinking about joining that's readily uh, available to you to have a look at and peruse on the New South Wales website under the recruiting page. And it gives you all the uh, specifications and it gives you uh, YouTube videos even, Greg, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. You just have to do a plank for 90 seconds. That's right. There's some 20, simple things. Yeah, yeah 25 push-ups, a bit of a hand grip test, a vertical jump, a short agility course, and 7.1 in the beep test. And in the beep. 
Yeah, you're able to take that into your local gym, show your PTI and say, well, this is the standard that I need to reach. And um, it doesn't take long to uh, get the human body up to achieve that. To those levels, yeah. yeah. So if anyone's thinking about it, certainly uh, have a look at those physical parameters and uh, it's all explained to you there. And of course, with policing, it comes that physical attribute where you need uh, a little bit of agility. And you, as you, we said before, you don't know what you're faced with every day. So you may be chasing someone down the street or jumping a fence. Well, as we get older, Mark, uh, we certainly slow down, but the, uh, do but the criminals bit. don't. So this is why we need young probationary constables right. and new police to step up to and do those great. full pursuits for us. Absolutely. And we've got 218 of them out there now. Not necessarily young, but certainly fit. That's right. They're fit. And I'd just like to talk about the Indigenous members of uh, yes. Class 350. We've got seven on the parade ground now. And three of those took a part in our iProud program, which is a pre-entry program for Indigenous okay. students. And one of them is my unit commander. And he had previous military as well, didn't he? Andrew Dargan, he did. He served yes. with one RAR and he's now leading my unit. So uh, this order. is my favourite part Please of the parade. Stand. All uniformed personnel are to salute for the Royal Salute. Right the margin, review order. By the centre. Hey! Yeah, very impressive. They've done well. Well done. And our Master of Ceremony, Sergeant Meg Burke will now take us through some of the special awards that some students achieve while they're here at the Academy. Thank you, please be seated. We would like to acknowledge the probationary constables on parade who have achieved levels of excellence during the course of their studies here at the Academy. The details of all the awards are contained in your attestation booklets. The following officers were presented with their awards at their formal dinner on Tuesday night. The recipient of the Robert Brotherson Award for Outstanding Academic Performance is Probationary Constable Rhys Tolliday. The recipients of the Stephen Rosa Memorial Award for outstanding performance in the physical training program are probationary constables Claudine Delenti and Jordan Foote. The recipients of the Juan Carlos Hernandez Memorial Shield for the highest proficiency in firearms training are probationary constables Rowan Adderley and Jessica Lieberman. Rowan was in my class. He was beside me in the room and he travelled there with me many times. Oh, okay. yeah. The recipient of the Police Practical Award is probationary constable Jonathan Ballam. And it's a great way to remember Juan. It is, uh, absolutely. It's a great tribute yeah. to In him and, and the sacrifice the New South, South Wales South Police Wales Band Wales. celebrated its 125th anniversary. In recognition of this, the New South Wales Police Commissioner would like to acknowledge this milestone by presenting a ceremonial bugle. I now invite Commissioner Fuller to present the ceremonial bugle to the commander of the band, Senior Sergeant Graham Dickman. parting gift uh, for the Commissioner. Now, I love traditions in the New South Wales Police Force and this is the start of a, of a new one. Thank you, sir.
Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the Australian National Anthem. The Australian National Anthem will be sung by New South Wales Police Band vocalist Belinda Parsons. All uniformed personnel will salute on the command, present arms. <coughs> our police band's lead vocalist, Belinda Parsons, and she certainly knows how to build Thank out a national land. She does. Yeah. The and host officer voice. will now direct the parade commander to march off the banner and support units and dismiss class 350 for the final time. So the commissioner walks onto the parade ground. He directs the parade commander to uh, march off the banner party and the support units. Support units being the band and the horses. It is customary for retiring officers of the New South Wales Police Force with long and distinguished service to be marched off at attestation parades. Today's parade will acknowledge the retirement of Commissioner Michael Fuller, APM, Deputy Commissioner Gary Warboys, APM, and Senior Constable Andrea Rodriguez. I would like to invite Commissioner-designate Karen Webb, APM, to read the biographies for the retiring officers. It's certainly fitting that the Commissioner designate Karen Webb uh, reads this for the outgoing Commissioner. Yes, it is, yes. Michael John Fuller, APM, Commissioner. Commissioner Michael Fuller began his 34-year policing career in 1987, starting in COGRA at 12 Division before performing general duties and criminal investigation duties in various metropolitan stations and specialists investigative areas. He was designated as a detective in 1993 and became a commissioned officer in 2002. After his promotion to superintendent in 2004 as operations manager of Greater Metropolitan Region, he was instrumental in the creation of region enforcement squads to tackle serious crime. In 2010, he was promoted to Assistant Commissioner and has led Southern Region, Professional Standards Command and Central Metropolitan Region, while taking responsibility for the Family and Domestic Violence portfolio as corporate sponsor. Appointed Commissioner of Police in April 2017, he restructured the New South Wales Police Force to create a more flexible, responsive workforce. He enhanced policing capabilities outside the Sydney metropolitan area creating the position of Deputy Commissioner Regional New South Wales Field Operations. He developed and launched the Commissioner's Rise Up strategy on 1 August 2018 to connect disengaged young people to work 
uh, opportunities, education and their communities. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Commissioner Fuller led the New South Wales Government response with the New South Wales Police Force taking responsibility for the successful hotel quarantine and border operations and the enforcement of health orders and restrictions. Commissioner Fuller has overseen the largest increase in police strength in more than 30 years, securing 1,500 additional permanent police positions over four years. In 2020, he launched a fairer merit-based promotions process that focuses on capability and leadership. He was awarded the Australian Police Medal in 2009 and holds a Master of Leadership and Management, Policing and Security and other tertiary qualifications. I now invite Commissioner Fuller to take up his position behind the Banner Party. I'd like to welcome Deputy Commissioner Gary Warboys. Gary Ronald Warboys, APM, Deputy Commissioner, State Emergency Operations Controller. Deputy Commissioner Warboys joined the New South Wales Police Force in 1981 as a junior trainee and was initially stationed at Blacktown, Number 27 Division. He moved into Higher Patrol the following year before gaining extensive experience in operational policing, serving at locations including Penrith, Lismore, Walgett and Lightning Ridge over the next 17 years. After his promotion to superintendent in 1999, he led the Goulburn, Monaro, Wollongong, Liverpool local area commands before returning in 2010 to Goulburn LAC as commander. September 2013, he was promoted to assistant commissioner as commander of Southern Region. He was the corporate sponsor for victims of crime, chaired the Uniform Standards Committee and represented the New South Wales Police Force on the Royal Humane Society Board and the National Police Memorial S Steering Committee. Deputy Commissioner Warboys was promoted to his current rank on the 28th of May 2017 to lead the newly established Regional New South Wales Field Operations. The New South Wales Police Force's most experienced State Emergency Operations Controller Deputy Commissioner Gary Warboys was appointed Deputy Commissioner CECON on 1 July 2021 to manage the police response to the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as leading recovery efforts following recent drought, bushfire and flood emergencies. He was awarded the Australian Police Medal in 2015 and holds a Masters of Public Policy and Administration and other tertiary qualifications. I now invite Deputy Commissioner Warboys to take up his position behind the Banner Party. Welcome, ma'am. Andrea Veronica Rodriguez. Former Detective Senior Constable, Prosecutor. Former Senior Constable Andrea Rodriguez joined the New South Wales Police Force in 1994 and started her service in general duties at Fairfield. She moved into criminal investigation at Cabramatta in 1997, earning her detective designation in 1999 and gaining promotion to Senior Constable the following year. She worked in criminal investigations at the Drug and Organised Crime Strike Force and the South East Asian Crime Squad before joining Special Services Group in 2001. In 2002, she began a 17-year career as a police prosecutor before leaving the New South Wales Police Force in 2019. Ms Rodriguez obtained her Diploma of Policing in 2000 and has received the National Police Medal, Second Class, National Medal and National Police Service Medal. She has been the patron of the Mounted Police and New South Wales Dog Unit since 2017. I now invite Senior Constable Rodriguez to take up her position behind the Benner Party. And Andrea Rodriguez also judges the drill shield during the week. Yesterday she awarded it to Unit 3, who has been instructed by a very good friend of mine, Sergeant Frank Gore from the Mount Drill Police. Thank you all for your service. Yeah, what a special moment Thank for you, those Matt. officers. Yeah, it certainly bookends a fantastic career. Um, 
34 years ago for Mr Fuller. Yes. 40 years the banner party, Warboys. retiring officers and support units will now march off the parade ground. Prior to this, there will be a musical salute to the banner. During the salute, all uniformed personnel are to salute on the command of present arms. Please quit your salute when the banner escorts shoulder arms. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. And as they went through those histories of each of those officers, uh, our commissioner and the, the deputy and, uh, and uh, the commissioner's wife, obviously they captured just but a few of the many vocabularies you can actually go into in the New South Wales Police Force. There are around about 200 different opportunities within the New South Wales Police. If you'd like the police from the air, there's the air wing, the water, if that's your thing. There's uh, the water police. And of course we see on display here today the mounted police. We have a couple of dog units sitting out there as well. And these officers obviously going to the field for their first three years of their careers. And then they can uh, choose to either stay in that uh, chosen area of, of uh, GDs, which we see a lot of officers stay in GDs for a lengthy the service of GDs. Or they yes, can go into any one of those other ground. fields. Plain clothes, obviously, in the detectives. And... Uh, certainly magnificent opportunities throughout the entirety of the New South Wales Police Force. And I also noticed that uh, all the members of the party marching out also have academic qualifications. So they our do. probationers today, after they finish their associate degree in police and practice, can build on that to get their Bachelor of Police. Yes. So that's thing, another thing they can do. The other thing that I notice about the police officers who reach these ranks is that they're always the ones who put their hand up. You know, you look at the task force that's, that they've worked on and the areas that they've worked in. You know, to, to, grad, to move forward through the police force, you need to put your hand up and say, I'm willing to take the lead or I'm willing to be part of that. Um, and those three police officers have certainly demonstrated that. And they've reaped the rewards uh, that uh, that sort of dedication has been given. Yes, and they would have never thought that when they stood on this parade ground as uh, being attested. But uh, who knows, out there amongst that 218 police, we may well have a future commissioner, a future deputy. Yeah. And look at the three of us are sitting here today. We have uh, Highway Patrol, uh, technical um, experience with yourself and the detective, investigative by, by Carla. There's a uh, dog unit, uh, special operations group, all this sort of stuff, just with us. Just so. with us three. Yeah. And I think we've got uh, combined about uh, 88... I think it adds up to about 88 that years. That sounds old. 88 <laughs> years of combined service. I'm still so. the youngest. <laughs> So the next part of the parade is, is the parade commander is going to uh, give the, the parade, parade back to the sergeant we'll hand the parade back to the for the dismissal. We will dismiss the class. And we get close to that uh, very important part that everyone waits for. That's the throwing of the hats at the end. The throwing of the hats, yes. It's what's known in, in the television world as uh, the money shot. It is the money shot. And of course, those uh, students who are now probationary constables. They're no longer Ladies students. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, and I'd just like to mention to that uh, people listening or, or the viewing today, they could Thank be sitting there thinking morning. about joining the police force and depending on their personal circumstances, this time next year they could be on that parade ground. They could very well be, so, so it's certainly the time to, uh, to do it and follow it up and uh, you could find yourself standing out there as proud as what these young probationary constables are. And of my own personal story, my husband was the parade commander for my stepdaughters passing out parade four years ago, I think, nearly today. Very nice. Yeah, so that was a Great really honor. proud moment. Yes. Now they've got to find their hats. <laughs> well, there you have it. The attestation of class 350, 218 new police officers sworn in and ready to protect the communities of New South Wales. From Monday, they hit the beat, getting an introduction to their commands and learning about their new patch. Carla, thank you again for your valuable time and knowledge. It's great to hear from you and have you on board today. Inspector Donaldson, likewise, thanks to you as well for imparting your wealth and wisdom. Thank you, Mark. Thank there, folks. We'd like to acknowledge our supporters, our partners, Charles Sturt University and the Police Bank. And thanks to all of you, our viewers, for tuning in and providing your support for all our new officers. On behalf of the New South Wales Police Force, thank you for watching and good morning.
This program brought to you by major broadcast partner, Charles Sturt University, a global leader in research and education for policing, law enforcement, border security, emergency management and public safety, and partner sponsor, Police Bank.